with you here. Um, a couple things here uh, before I get into uh, get into Iowa. Um, uh, Jimmy Soto will. Uh, it's been determined that he's going to need uh, season-ending surgery on a shoulder. Um, he's having that here immediately. We thought he might be able to come back and play, but um, uh, right now it's it's just it's it, you know it's not going to be possible. I think he wanted to. Uh, try to give it a go, but he's just not going to be able to do it. It's it's a lengthy recovery, about six months for full return uh, to to full contact and play. So it's a lengthy recovery uh, with this type of injury. So Jimmy, unfortunately, um, will be out. I'm disappointed for him, uh, disappointed for our team, but it's part of uh, what happens. Uh, we understand that it's it's part of. Uh, uh, kind of what teams go through. Unfortunately, we've been hit with the injury bug a little bit, or quite a bit more. But uh, disappointed for Jimmy. He gave us great contributions. Uh, I know he's super excited to get back. And um, you know, several of our conversations generated around that. So he'll still be around our team, uh, just like Abel Porter is right now. Abel Porter's around our team on a regular basis right now. Uh, Jimmy will remain around our team and get get himself ready for next year, which I know he's he's excited about. Uh, as far as Iowa, obviously Iowa is um, tremendous. Uh, Fran uh, has a tremendous team, um, really well coached. They're elite offensively, historically good offensively. Um, and maybe – I think in a lot of ways, this is the best offensive team uh, I've ever coached against. Um, they just have a tremendous skill and ability. And you've got uh, Bo Hannon's given them, given them a lift as an older guard coming back from injury. Frederick's a terrific um, a scoring guard. Uh, Connor McCaffrey, I think, is – I just love his game. He competes. He gives plays with an edge. He's the best post feeder in the country. Um uh, he can defend multiple positions. I, I love I love McCaffrey and how he plays. Uh, Wieskamp obviously has been on the NBA radar for a couple of years, and then uh, you have you have Garza, who's who's been uh, uh, you know the best player in college basketball for the last couple of years. And they've got a really deep bench. It's it's not just about that starting group, but um, got a really deep bench. So we're looking forward to the challenge. It'll be a great one. We'll need to be as is we'll need to play as well as we played all year. Okay, we'll start off with uh, Brendan Gulick. Hi, Chris. Good to chat with you. Hey, what are the unique challenges of trying to defend a guy like Luca Garza? I mean, obviously his his statistics and his impact speak for itself, but um, how do you try to limit his effectiveness? Because the last couple times out, Iowa has you know maybe not been quite as dominant as they had been at the beginning of the season. Yeah, Brendan, I, I think it's, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to completely um, neutralize him. He's just too good, and they do too good of job getting in the ball in, in positions. Um, uh, so he just they're just they're too good. So uh, and he's they're too good finding him at spot. His motor, he's got the best motor of any big I've seen since maybe Tyler Hansborough. I'm sure there have been other guys, but kind of that kind of a motor. So I think you just got to make him work. You got to make it, try to make it difficult for him, make it work. But obviously he's got elite touch and can score it a number of different ways. And that's what makes him so good offensively. And and how does playing against some of the other really impressive big men in the big 10, maybe help prepare you for a game like this, you know, having played Travion Williams and having played against Illinois and, and Kofi Coburn. I mean, it, th those opportunities, are there parts of, those games prepping for those guys that can help you play, you know, against someone like Luca, you know, yeah, but, but he's different. Um, Wisconsin's bigs are good as well. Um, you know, he's different and, and they're different. They're very big. Nunji's big off the bench for him. So I think collectively their size is a concern because just they're, they're not just big there. Gars is big and long, but so is Nunji and, um, Wies camp has good length. So, you know, I think their physicality and, and how big they are is a concern, but there's not, there's not really a team in our league that 
kind of plays uh, like them. Um, so it's it's a, it's an interesting, different matchup. They're just they're different, a little bit different in how they attack. And as I mentioned, their numbers are historically good. Okay, hey, next we'll go to Griffin Strong. Uh, hey, Coach. After the last game, uh, you talked, you know, about um, how tight games have been called for you guys in terms of the officiating. Um, how much of a concern is that for you guys, in particular with this game? Obviously, you talked about the size and Luca Garza being such a dominant presence down low. And have you guys maybe worked on worked on ways to, you know, work around that? Um, you know, especially facing a guy like that, and especially knowing that you might have to put, you know, EJ, one of your top scorers on uh, Garza for, for uh, a big period of the game? Yeah, obviously it's a concern, Griffin. It is because they do a great job getting you in foul trouble. Um, so, so it is a concern. And uh, I think you have to be aware of that. And uh, they just do such a great job of putting you in, in difficult positions. It's a game where, quite honestly, I would love to have Ibrahim available just to have another, another big with size um, and length um, uh, around the rim. Um, you know, I, I, I thought of that. This is, this is kind of a perfect game to have another a body like that, um, that has some length and size. Obviously he's not going to be available, but we're going to have to be aware of it. Uh, we are going to have to be aware of it and, uh, do a good job of limiting our foul trouble. And then how much, how much zone do you anticipate them playing against you guys? Um, and how much has that, um, been a part of your guys' preparations in terms of what you've been uh, going up against in practice? You know, it's a part of what they do. So I think it'll continue to be a part of what they do. Uh, we'll see game to game, um, you know, how much how much they, they play it. But it's a, it's a part of their defensive system. So we certainly expect to see it. OK, next up, Adam Jardy. Hey, Chris, kind of following off that, that last question, but watching them against Michigan State uh, the other night, they, they really um, uh, made some things difficult for Michigan State by using that, that sort of pressure and then falling back into that zone. I wonder what you see as being the keys to, to handling that and what sort of pressure that puts on your backcourt. You know, I think we're going to have to be good at being decisive and how we attack, uh, attack it and both attacking their pressure, attacking their man and their zone. I, I just think you need to be a decisive. Uh, there has to be a level of aggressiveness that you play with, which uh, quite honestly, we didn't play with very well last year. Um, at their place, and they had something to do with that. I thought they were really physical uh, and aggressive. But, um, you know, you just – you don't want to be tentative. You want to play aggressive and try not to play on your heels. Um, try to play with force and, and attacking. But they do a good job going from, from their press back to their uh, zone or man. And when you talk about trying to be more physical and aggressive and decisive against them, when I think back to that game last year, it seemed like when EJ came off the bench, he was able to – Obviously, he's not a guard, but he was he he went at Luca a few times, and he seemed to not you know shy away from that moment. Um, are you? What do you expect from from maybe how he might handle it now? As his role is obviously going to be bigger and on a you know a big stage like this. Yeah, you know, I just want him to be EJ. I do think that that that's true. In that game, he was able to find some holes and attack in places, and and uh, was able to make some shots and. Um, gave us a lift there when we desperately needed. We were trouble. We were having trouble scoring, and then we were also having trouble uh, stopping them. So um, I think, um, you know, keeping him on the floor, keeping him out of foul trouble, um, and they, they rotate a lot of bodies. So I think our, our depth is going to be important for us as well. Okay, next, uh, Patrick Murphy. Chris, when we've talked to you about guard play. I think it's always been under the assumption that Jimmy would probably be back. Um, so the guys that have handled the ball, how comfortable have you been with, with Justice, Dwayne, Michi, and now obviously CJ back, but still dealing with the injury? You know, uh, comfortable. You know, our turnovers have went up a little bit in league play, uh, Patrick, and I do think that's a byproduct of us still trying to figure some things out. And some of that's just been our, our decision making. But in general, you know, they they went up a little bit. It's not been dramatic, but it's been it's been enough that certainly I've noticed. So I think we got to get better with that. Um, I've, I've been you know it's been good to have CJ back because he's he's typically a guy that handles it really well, and I think he's played well in his stretch back. But I think all in all, I feel comfortable with you know with our rotation of guards when you include Dwayne, Michi, CJ, Justice, uh, kind of in that primary ball handling uh, group. And how Jimmy handled the news of this? I mean, obviously with the injury, it, it probably wasn't a shock, but he's a guy who seems to be having a lot of fun here before he got hurt. 
Yeah, he was disappointed. It was really hard for him. If you saw him after the, the Rutgers game, and I think maybe Adam was was there, uh, he was emotional. Um, you know, I I I you know we had we had a moment there just because he was emotional. We, you know, I think he knew at that point it could be over. It's just we were we were trying to exhaust every option to to continue the season, but it also factored in six month recovery. You know, that's also uh, factors into the, the timing of all this. So he, he, you know, he's really disappointed. You're right. He, he loves it here and was, you know, it, it played well at Rutgers. So he was excited about uh, continuing on. Okay. Next up, we'll go to Kitty Gahuli. Hey coach. I just want to talk a little bit about Justin Arns and what he's been able to bring to the table. I know you've talked about him a little bit, but just kind of overarching um, you know, how he's been kind of stepped up into and been asked to, to do a little bit more this year. Yeah, Justin's been great. Yeah, he's done a great job for us and um, I've loved his, you know, he had a great offseason. I've said that to a number of people. Justin had a tremendous offseason um, and was as, he had as good offseason as, as I've seen, uh, got in great shape, really committed himself and, you uh, uh, has understood our defensive system uh, better um, and just continues to continues to grow as a player. So I'm really, really happy for him. And he's going to be important for us. He's got to continue to take steps forward here, moving, moving forward down the stretch. You know, I think that's so important for everybody. And it, not stepping aside from Justin here a little bit, I think that the biggest thing for us right now is, is our um, – is us getting better and improving every day. This is this, this is the most challenging closing stretch, um, uh, February March closing stretch of schedule that that uh, I've been a part of. Certainly in our four years here, but that I've been a part of. When you look just at the strength of schedule in general, and when you look at every team we play is either a top ten team or a tournament team or maybe a bubble team. It's 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 amazing. It's just it's it's an incredible stretch. So I think for us, Justin and every one of our guys that have gotten better has to continue to get better as, as we uh, wind down the season, that's going to be, that's imp really going to be important for us. Cause we've, we've not really played a, a month and a half stretch of schedule like this with the caliber of teams that we were playing. Okay. Next up, we'll go to Tim Hall. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Good. Tim. Yeah. I don't know how much of this you heard or even cared to listen to, but it seemed that the the height disadvantage for your team was going to be a thing this year, or the lack of the true five. And I'm just curious, after seeing how well you guys have played and how tough you've been on the glass, it, was that a bit overblown in your opinion? Well, I, I'd like to wait until you know we get through this stretch, um, Timmy, just to make sure that. You know, it's not as much of a factor as 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 certainly it was made to be. Um, uh, and I understand uh, reasonable questions uh, coming into the season about losing Caleb and our size and rebounding and defense because I think as a coach you have the same questions. But I I kind of want to see how we how we navigate this stretch of bigs. Iowa presents a lot of challenges with their size, um, but I think all in all. Um, you know, what we've been able to do, Tim, is we have at times really used it to our advantage um, in a lot of ways, is our mobility and our versatility at those positions, which I think if you do have some deficiency in terms of size, you got to find ways to use it as an advantage. Um, uh, and those, those guys have done a good job doing that, particularly our versatile forwards, kind of which is what we call them, that, that group of versatile forwards we have. And you're right, just one more. This will be the ultimate test on Thursday. But you've coached a lot of different places. You've seen those really good Carolina teams before being in the Big East and the Big Ten. Just how good is Luca as far as every player you've coached against in your career? Uh, he's, he's the best um, collection of offensive skill and physicality of, of any big I've ever coached against. And um, – you know, I didn't coach against uh, Tyler Hansbro. We have, have coached against Carolina and their bigs a lot. We coached against them in the Sweet 16 when they won the national championship that year. And they had a great collection of bigs. Um, 
but his motor is, it's just, it's an, it's unparalleled. And it really is Tyler Hansbrough like with his motor and his physicality. So, um, you know, I think there's a reason, I mean, he's, when I say he's been the best player in college basketball over the last couple of years, a lot of great players in college basketball, but I don't think that's an overstatement. So he's a fantastic talent. Okay, next, what does Steven means? Hey coach, um, kind of weird question. You had Caleb all three years he was here. Um, and his first year here, it was obviously Kata's show. He was kind of more of a, a secondary role behind Kata. And then the last two years, he's been your go-to guy. Um, can you just talk about the jump maybe you saw him take from that freshman season to sophomore year throughout the off season and going into that year? Uh, Caleb? Yeah. yeah. There's a reason I'm asking, but yeah, start there. Yeah, yeah. It was a tremendous jump. And keep in mind now, uh, Stephen, I think as we all know, um, you know, when, once we got through that first year, we kind of looked and we said, wow, you know, you got Jay Sean Tate, you got Kate of HD up coming back from injury. And now if we can just piece enough few things together, we can have a good team in granted a big 10 that was, it was down that year. That just was an average uh, high major league. Um, and we were able to do that because we had, we had great team chemistry. And then you had those two guys uh, that, that really had elite ability and elite talent um, that were older. And then you had, you had guys like Caleb and Cam and, you know, uh, Andre and, and Moose and Kyle and Andrew Dockich and a number of guys kind of fill in. But what we also understood, Stephen, that was most important is the middle part of the roster was, was gutted, to be quite honest with you. It just – there wasn't – uh, there wasn't as, as many bodies because for a variety of reasons, it was just those classes were gutted. And I think that was part of the reason why our first two years here, we were, um, we were kind of picked where we were. And I think, I think the reality is Caleb's growth between his freshman and sophomore year and other players, not just him, but his growth really allowed him to have a great sophomore year. And it allowed us to beat some people early and get to the tournament. In a year when people didn't think that we could, we we relied on him heavily, as you can remember, to just to just to get to the tournament. And then when he got back after being out a couple games at the end of the year, he was a force against uh, Iowa State in the tournament. Uh, he and uh, Keyshawn, whew, Keyshawn was good too that game. But uh, uh, so his development was critical. His development was critical, and it really stabilized us when we could have very easily um, had a very difficult transition of a couple years. And I know this is probably a more talented roster than what you guys had in Caleb's second year here, but it just seems like EJ's on a similar trajectory. A guy who in year one, it's just play this role for now. Yeah. Your secondary, just rebound, play defense, just play this role. And now his second year in the program, he's clearly become kind of your go-to guy here. And he's, like Caleb, got he's kind of settled into that role pretty easily here. Do you see a lot of that same? Well, did I you see there, a similar jump that off season? Yeah, I think there has been a similar a similar jump. Um, I'm not sure exactly the numbers, but there has I think been a similar jump. Um, Caleb had a really good off season between freshman and sophomore year. EJ had an outstanding off season, even in spite of COVID. Uh, you're right. Our our, you know, having been able to have a couple recruiting years gives us. EJ a little more, um, you know, he's got, he's got just more bodies around them. He's got a, a more constructed roster around him, which I think can take a little bit of pressure uh, off a, a young, young guy like, like EJ. Um, but still he has to carry a major role for us, but the roster is just constructed a little bit more solid right now um, with justice and Dwayne and CJ and some other guys, Kyle, that, that can step into a role, but there's no question we rely on him really uh, in a similar way that we did Caleb. And kind of lastly, I know he can score and he can rebound the ball. That's obvious. Um, where is he as a passer? Is that still something? Getting better. Made? Yeah, it's, he's got to work on it, getting better. He's got to get better at passing out of traps. The hardest thing for him is his size when he gets trapped. Um, he's got to continue to get better at being a passer. I think he can. He, he'll get there for sure because he's such a – willing learner, but he's, we got to get better with that. Thanks. And next we'll go back to Brendan Gulick. 
Coach, obviously you've relied pretty heavily on Justice Suing to, to kind of help stabilize the point position when uh, when CJ was down and, and now with this news with Jimmy. Um, I, I guess I'm just looking for your overall impressions on the way that Justice you know, came to this program maybe under um, one impression, and I'm not sure he could have foreseen you know, his journey here going like this, and yet he's excelled in, in this spot right now. Yeah, I don't know that he had what expectations really he had. Um, uh, I think every every young man kind of comes in with certain thoughts, but he's also really bright, Brendan, and understands that his transition was going to be a challenging one and was going to come with ups and downs. So I think he's really taking it game by game and moment by moment and understands that he's got a little a lot of work and improvement ahead of him. But uh, he's again, he's, he's a really willing learner and uh, hungry to get better, and that's been – uh, a sign, I think, of his real progress. I know you don't like big picture questions, so I'm going to try to not ask it from that perspective. Um, but you have emphasized several times how much you, you want this team to enjoy the journey that they're on this year because it's been such a hard year. Uh, and, and you just reemphasize the schedule to come is equally as challenging. Yeah. How rewarding has it been for you to see this team go from even at the beginning of January to where you're still trying to figure some things out to now you're, you're really riding a great stretch of basketball and, and playing well going into that toughest stretch you've got. You know, it's been really rewarding, um, really rewarding. It's been a rewarding group to coach, you know, obviously uh, winning helps. Um, but as we know with this league, you know, you can play well and still lose and, uh, and go on a losing streak. So I think you're a little bit guarded of, of feeling in some ways too good or too healthy. We just got to stay committed to, to getting better. But yeah, I, I, you know, it's been a really rewarding group to coach. And uh, um, I think what I felt good about is they've felt some rewards in, in the fact that we've, we've won games because I think you do worry about that now more than ever in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, the, the COVID stuff, as well as if you're struggling, that really can wear on a group. So I, I felt good that they've been rewarded, uh, but they also understand it's a brutal closing stretch for us. Okay, we'll go back to Adam Jardy. Chris, um, I know we've got a, a ways to go here, but it sounds like Michigan's not going to be maybe playing for a little while. And um, I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on, on like what the Big Ten – maybe should or, or might do going forward as far as, I mean, I don't know how they're going to crown a regular season champion this year. What, what sort of challenge do you foresee there? You know, I, I probably want to wait to talk about that more um, as we get closer, Adam. And I do think that it's a, it's a conversation worth having uh, as you get closer uh, because of some of the schedule inequities that happen anyway in a 20 game schedule with, 14 teams, their schedule and equities anyway, if everybody's playing 20 games, right? We, we understand that. Every, not everybody plays the same caliber of schedule. Uh, so now if you're playing less games, uh, it is that much more uh, exaggerated, some scheduling uh, inequities. So I think as we get closer, it'll be something that uh, maybe will command more dialogue um, uh, because I think – uh, that's a really valuable thing. Obviously, it's what everybody competes for is a chance to to be crowned the champion. So I'm not uh, in tuned as, as much in terms of what's uh, what their schedule on return is. But I do think it's something that will warrant conversation here uh, and maybe in the coming weeks. And this will be uh, Kyle Young's 100th game at Ohio State. You've spoken often about the, the, the bond that you guys have, but, but what does that mean to you to know that, I mean, he's – yeah, that seems like a, an important milestone for a dude like that. Well, you know, right, the best ability is availability, and he's been that. And he's been that um, pretty consistently. He's, he's obviously been banged up and more, gotten gotten through some, some difficult times with his lower leg injuries. But, um, you know, I, I've, I've, I, as I've said, you know, I just I love him as a kid. I love him as a player. He's been so important to our program. It's hard to overstate how important he was in adding kind of on the fly uh, to that, to that class with, with Musa and Caleb. It's just hard to, hard to overstate how important because it's what it's done is it's brought 
real consistent, just good. You have a good player and brought real consistency in a lot of ways and, and great buy-in in terms of how we, he's never not bought into how we, how we do things. And that's invaluable beyond just his talent. Okay. And we'll wrap up with Colin Hosshill. I just had a quick uh, clarification question. What, what is Jimmy's injury specifically beyond, I know you've referred to it as just a shoulder injury for a while, but are there any other specifics you can offer? It's a shoulder uh, separation. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah. Thank you. Shoulder separation. Okay. I think that's it coach. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks guys.